Hello guys, I hope you are doing good. Welcome to this new video. Today we are going to implement one of the important concept in JavaScript interviews, which is debouncing. You may have heard through social media that debouncing and throttling are very important and are often asked during the interviews. But because they have become so common, so people have introduced the variations of debouncing and rather than having the basic concept, they expect you to implement these variations. In this video, we are going to see the basic debouncing as well as one of its variation which is widely asked during the interview. Debouncing is a way to reduce the network calls. For example, not only the network calls, uh, it is a way to reduce function call or any type of operation. So on the screen you see I have a search box over here, right? And let's say if I type something in the search box and we have to make a network call to search the result for that query. So through debouncing what we can do is we can make sure that we make the network call only after the user has stopped writing the query after for a given amount of time, not after for a given amount of time. For example, you see the function we have is debounce, right? And this debounce will accept a function and this function will be invoked after user has stopped performing or stopped the event for this amount of time. That is, let's say we are invoking this debounce search on the key of event. So when user is continuously typing, this function won't be invoked, this on change. If the user has given a gap or a delay of 1000 millisecond between the first key press and the next key press event, then this function will be invoked. So this is how we use debouncing to reduce the number of operations and we want to make sure that whatever the thought process that user is going through, let him complete and give him a buffer. So in that buffer, if user is not performing any type of event or action, then only we have to invoke the R operation or the function calls. So let's start implementing the basic debounce over here. The basic debounce is, as you are aware, we have to invoke this function. So debounce will take a function and a delay as input or as an argument. And the argument function will be invoked only after user had stopped typing for the given amount of time. So launch debounce and debounce will take a function and delay and it will return another function that function will be invoked or it will be passed to any type of event. So this will be invoked. So according to the structure, our debounce function will accept a function and delay and it will return a function. So return a function. Now this return function can accept arguments. So whatever argument this event listener will provide to this debound search will be passed down to this on change event. That means this return function will accept the arguments and that arguments we have to forward it further to the function that we receive as input. So here let me use the rest operator to aggregate all the arguments. Now Whenever this function is invoked, right? We have to make sure that we call the input function only when the user has stopped for a certain amount of time. That is, we are going to use set timeout. And here I am going to pass the delay. Now, this set timeout should invoke this function. Now, this function will accept this argument. Along with the argument, we are going to pass the context of the function as well. So let me store the context so that I can access it inside the set timeout. So here context equals to this. So this refers to the context of the parent function. Here I am using fat arrow function. I can access it inside also. But just a precaution, I am storing the this of the parent function in the variable context and that I will pass with the help of apply method over here. 
so this will set the context of the parent function along with the arguments now our function will invoke the input function after a delay of the given amount of time but in case this function is called before this operation is successful i mean it is completed then we have to revoke this so in that case for that i am going to use this a variable in the parent i am going to create a closure and with the help of this set timeout i am going to store the timer rd of the set timeout function that will be invoking inside that so this timeout will hold the timer id and let's say this function is invoked before this set timeout is completed so we are going to clear the timeout so what it will do is if the function is repeatedly getting called it will clear the previous calls of the set timeout so in case the set timeout is running previously it will clear that and it will trigger a fresh timeout so what will happen is if the function is continuously getting called it will keep on resetting the set timeout and it will uh, in the uh, every time it will create a fresh call for the set timeout so that the previous calls will be cleared and a new will be assigned in case there are no further calls made so this set timeout will complete and the function the input function will be invoked if if it is not completed and before the set timeout could invoke this uh, if the parent function is invoked so it will again clear that and reset the timer so this is how debounce works this is the basic implementation of debounce let's try to run this so if i click on the run code and because debounce is already being used over here so if i type something you will see that if i keep on typing nothing is printed on the console but if i stop for one second you see that console log is printed so that's how debounce works let me clear this and let me type again if i'm typing something nothing is getting printed but if i stop for one second you'll see that logs get printed so that's how debounce works now this was a simple implementation of debounce there is now a variation of debounce as well so we have to create a debounce with leading and trailing option so leading is the debounce because in this classic implementation you saw that the function was invoked after the delay with the leading option what will happen is the function will be invoked immediately and with the trailing option it will behave normally as it should do in the classic implementation so we have two flags leading and trailing leading will invoke it directly on the first call itself trailing will invoke after the delay and if we have both the flags enabled then it will invoke the function two times one is during the leading so the moment you press a key and after the delay so we have to create this debounce with the variation so let's start implementing this const debounce it will accept the function delay and then the option option will have two values leading let's keep it false and then trailing so true now leading will invoke it immediately trailing will invoke it at the end of the delay and if both are uh, true then uh, it will invoke it twice once the moment you type and then after the delay and if both are false nothing will happen so we are using these options and we are going to create this variation of the debounce now for this case we have to handle two scenarios one for the leading and one for the trailing so similar to the classic implementation this will also return a function and that function will accept the arguments now we have to handle the both the cases the trailing and the leading so let me get the context over here first i am going to get the context and store it in a variable now after that let's handle the 
leading case. So as you are aware, um, for the trailing case, we are going to use set timeout so that we can make the input function call after the delay. So we are going to use a variable to store the timer ID. Along with this, we are going to use a flag is leading invoked. So this leading invoked, what it will do is it will help us to decide if the function call was made for leading or for trailing. So we stored the variable. Now first thing we will do is if the timer has run. So this is the base condition. If the timer has run, so we have to clear the timeout. This is for the trailing case. So if the timer has run, we have to clear the timeout. Now this condition is for the leading. So if the option in the option, we have the leading option leading enabled that is the value of leading is true and if the timeout is not set i mean the timeout is empty then we are going to make or invoke the function immediately which is we will call this function and we will pass the context and our arguments to it So we are going to pass the context and the arguments and we'll update the flag that the leading is being invoked. So we are done with the leading operation. Otherwise, we'll reset and we'll update the flag to false that leading operation was not completed or we were not able to invoke the input function on the leading. Then comes the trailing part. So here we use the set timeout. And we'll pass the delay over here. Whatever the delay is. And this will check if option dot trailing. So if trailing is enabled and it's not. And we haven't invoked for the leading. That means if the value is false then we are going to call the input function with the context and the args and at the end we are going to reset the timer just for precaution so that our base condition for leading it should work on the next call it will automatically be handled by this uh, clear timeout but we are just taking a precaution and we are resetting it over here so that's it that's with the flag we have set. Now here, as you see, I've set the default parameter and I've set leading as false and trailing as true. So because trailing as true, it should behave as the classic debounce. So if I run this over here, unexpected token, Okay, sorry. My mistake, return function was there. So our code is working. If I'm typing something and if I stop for one second, that is 1000 milliseconds that the delay we have passed, we see that value is printed. Now let's set the trailing to false and leading to true. So you'll see that the moment I type, the value will be printed. See, the moment I type, the value was printed. And after that, when I stopped typing, nothing was printed. So it has invoked the debounce function immediately. Now, <clears throat> sorry, if I resume typing, you will see that again, the value was printed. So leading invokes the debounce function at the beginning rather than after the delay. So we saw leading, we saw trailing. Now let me in enable both the flags. So if I enable the trailing flag over here, both leading and trailing. So you will see that the function is invoked at the beginning as well as at the end. So see two values were printed. One was at the beginning when I started typing 
and after that when i start typing for one second or thousand milliseconds so that's how a variation of debounce has to be implemented with the leading and the trailing flag in the next video we'll see how we can use this debounce function to create a hook in react called use debounce that will function similarly i hope you have learned something new today thank you for your time